Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And today, oh, we have a lot of cool stuff to talk about. XRP at the start here, then a little bit about Phantom because that coin is popping off. We're also going to talk a little bit about ADA today, but not in this video. It's going to come out somewhere later today on this channel though. So if you're excited for that, make sure you press that subscribe button with of course the notification bell on. Then a little bit more about Phantom I see already. A little bit about some very interesting crypto. I'm going to spare you the, the suspense, Algorand, Elon Musk, and Google. Just a little pun at the end. Having said that, let's dive right into the XRP news. Huh? So Ripple X shared this over on their Twitter. XRPL grants help fund open source projects that advance the needs of the ever-growing XRP ledger community. Um, long story short, if you want to get funded by Ripple, there's possibilities for that, and a lot of people don't know. So there's actually a website, which is called xplgrants.org, where basically you can get funded by Ripple for projects that you're going to launch in the XP Ledger. Uh, I, I'm not sure how good you have to be, nor what exactly consists of an option, uh, but I believe if you, for example, launch an NFT project as a bigger company or something like that, you might actually get some help from them or some funding. Um, can I spare more details? I don't know them because I've never gotten any money from Ripple in XRP or in any currency whatsoever. I've actually never spoken to a Ripple employee in my life. Little fun fact. All right, moving on. John Deedon has shared something pretty peculiar over on Instagram. And it's, it's in regards to uh, Chico Crypto because um, apparently Chico Crypto worried about the Ripple case. It's not about the Ripple case. It's not about Ripple and classifying Ripple as a security. It's actually going back and being able to get Ethereum and classify it as a security. So that's a little story here about when Bitcoin maximalists throw their dummies out of the pram. It is curious what... Oh, I can't see that. Uh, this is the Nick Carter, who I... Uh, I think he, he... Did he ban me now? Oh, no, he just limits that for some reason. I, maybe, I thought maybe he blocked me because I... Actually, was roasting him in my previous video, but I'm not sure what it looks like when you're blocked by somebody. I'm, I'm not sure how this works out, though, guys. I'm not a Twitter professional. When Bitcoin maximalists throw their dummies out of the pram, it is curious why they expend so much energy trying to remain ignorant. JV said, I see how this is going to go. Ripple win the lawsuit and it will get mass adoption. ETH groupies will claim Ripple partner with the government and lobby to get them clarity. Similar to what ETH did in the beginning, but settled for bridging regulators to get temporary clarity. Uh, John says, Jay is on something here. The ETH maxis have called us conspiracy theories for proving the free pass. A year from now, those same people will be offering conspiracy theories of how Ripple and the SEC conspired. Ripple asked the SEC to sue them, get clarity, and go after ETH. And then Bank said, Chico worried about the Ripple case. It's not about Ripple and classifying Ripple as a security. It's actually going back and being able to get Ethereum and classify it as a security. So let's check out what Chico had to say here. Okay, I accidentally messed up the sound, so here we go again. I'm kind of worried about the Ripple case. I almost have a feeling that it was kind of set up to be like this. It's not about Ripple and classifying Ripple as a security. It's actually going back and being able to get Ethereum and classify it as a security and take down what's happened, you know. DeFi has unshackled a lot of people and gave people financial freedom through, um, you know, some of these APYs and... Um, the ability to stack money and you know leverage leverage their assets in ways that weren't possible in the traditional financial system unless you're buku rich well it's given people like me and you the opportunity to <laughs> get those apys that some of the richer people um, get out in this world so you guys again be be wary about this case. Um, I need to make some content on it because it is one of the biggest things in the crypto markets that's happening right now. Um, I think that's about it, you guys. And um, just okay. So straight to the bat here. Um, no, no I, I, it's hard to say exactly whether or not he's giving a little shout out to Ripple for the case, or actually a shout out in a negative manner. I mean, you can see his little speech two sides. If you're being afraid of the case for the implications on Ethereum. From a certain perspective, he's already explaining that Ethereum had some sort of, uh, I don't wanna say free pass necessarily because we don't know what his opinion is. But okay, let's actually just see, we said something, let's see what we think about it. Well, what I think about it is there's a very solid point to be made. 
there's a very good chance that the SEC didn't do this to get after Ripple because at the end of the day, so many things don't line up, it doesn't make sense. And there's a high probability that there was a, a deeper idea behind it. Now, whether or not that is to regulate crypto in a certain sense, you just need a starting point. Whether or not it's to go after the first crypto in line when uh, you have Bitcoin, then ETH, and then XRP. You can't touch Bitcoin and ETH, you go after XRP. Or whether or not it'd be to actually get behind Bitcoin and then to use XRP as a scapegoat with Ethereum in the middle. We don't really know. We can speculate all we want, but we have no clue. So, once more from, from uh, Chico's side here. It's hard to say what is fair, what is good, what is bad. And it's also hard to say whether or not we should actually be watching out because it could also be that Ripple literally was just as surprised as we were that they all of a sudden were going after and nothing's going to happen to Ethereum after this, nothing's going to happen to Bitcoin. There is a lot to say, all right? There's a lot to say about these things. Uh, apparently, he's anti-XP, so don't respect. I don't, I don't know about that. Right? Um, I, I just don't know too much about his side of things. I just know my own opinion about these things that I like to share. And I like to keep things as neutral as possible, saying, you know, he has an opinion. Let's hear him out for that. And if it sounds more logical, we might follow along. We might, you know, maybe basically change our mindsets. If it doesn't sound like something we believe or <laughs> it doesn't sound logical to us, we don't take it in. You know, keep a neutral stance. Don't just think, no, this guy's anti-XRP is not to be trusted. Even if he is against XRP, which could be, I don't, I can't confirm nor deny, he might still have a valid point. He might make more sense than an XRP maximalist. It's the honest truth. Hear people out for what they have to say, even though they might be against you. All right. In the next little part here, still about XRP, uh, Crypto Ari shared the most recent SEC v. Ripple decision by Judge Netburn. Who is the real winner? Because there was actually quite a lot of uh, confusion about that. Written by a former chief of the SEC Office of Internet Enforcement. Check out all of his articles. You can do that. But John says this article is a case study on confirmation bias. Can you explain further? Well, the ruling is more technical than substantive. She accepted the speech as personal opinion and not as an official statement by the SEC. He claims this weakens Ripple's reliance on it as guidance. Wrong. It's an objective standard, not subjective. The market considered it guidance. The issue is what impact this speech had on the market. Hinman said, we at the SEC don't consider it a security. Articles were written about the SEC declaring ETH not a security. Lawyers who negotiated with the SEC said, if you're a little more decentralized than ETH, you're golden. So that's where the confusion comes in, and that's where the real winner comes to shine, which is relative. If we're looking from an SEC perspective, you might say, well, the fact that the judge classified this speech from William Hinman in 2018 as an opinion is a win. If we're looking for Ripple, oh, sorry, a little uh, stamp my microphone in the face for a little second. I'm sorry about that. If you're looking from, oh, guys, I so hope that my recording settings are right on this. If it's not, I am not going to record this again, all right? We'll skip the video for today. I hope it's good. Oh, because my recording cut out just now. I'm thinking maybe it reset the microphone and I am. Oh, okay. Well, let's hope it's all good. <laughs> let's hope it's all good. You know, afterwards. <laughs> so, um,. Yeah, I, I lost my train of thought there. I, I think I think we covered the most important parts about this, though. Oh, I'm so scared about the microphone part of things. No way. Please let it be right. If um, yeah, the SEC can see from their side whether or not they're right, Ripple from their side is perspective thing. SEC could just say his speech was his opinion, which is good. Ripple can say what well, was an opinion. Um, and, and so the, even though the judge has an opinion, the market did not expect it that way, and the market you know couldn't really have fathomed that. So it, rely, or it gives them more... A few basically for the fair notice of saying, well, apparently it was an opinion, yet that's the only thing the market got. So if that is an opinion, then how could we have ever fathomed what XRP would have been? And then all they can say the SEC is just, well, we have the security definition of 1938, whatever. And Ripple can come back saying, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. All right. Phantom and one Ethereum competitor are gunning for all time highs. Holy smokes. Phantom and one Ethereum competitor are gunning for all-time highs, according to top crypto analysts. Guys, I'm so freaking excited for crypto, man. I'm also, I really hope you had a wonderful day. I just got some beautiful news. I see it on my phone just now. Got me hyped up, all right? Hope you guys are having a good day. Wow, this is amazing stuff. I'll, I'll let you know on the news pretty soon here. I have some really cool stuff coming up, and we just got the go-ahead, so that can be really, really fun for the channel. Oh, I'm hyped up, guys. I'm excited. Oh, all right, um... So, a popular crypto analyst and trader is giving his bullish predictions for the native token of two smart contract-enabled blockchains. 
the guy known as Smart Contractor, never heard of him in my life, but apparently he's excited about One and Phantom. Long story short, I also hold both these cryptos, and recently, I actually saw one do really well, and one of the guys, who was it now? Um, one of the guys that I spoke to quite recently actually told me that it made a really big bet on the Harmony 1 crypto and it worked off like one of the best bets ever. And so I kind of wanted to say, well, if you don't hold these two, maybe look into them because they're going really, really hard right now. And yeah, as we've said before, it is layer one season right now where coins that are layer one are, uh, are really doing well. And it's, it's a diversification game as well. I'm just personally putting a lot of money into these different DeFi protocols that are at the highest tier of TVL. Then again, like a coin that I want to cover a little bit later than that, uh, for example here, Algorand, even though it's not at the top of TVL and at, at all total value locked at all, it still has a lot of potential, but I'm just investing in a lot of DeFi type of cryptos right now. I just think it's the best moment to get into them because right now Bitcoin is not going to make you rich. All coins are if you're wanting my own opinion. And so the best way to go about these things, I guess, is to go for all coins that are uh, juicy, have high potential. Phantom is one. Harmony one is not necessarily my top performer or the top one I would kind of think of when uh, somebody asked me for a crypto bag. But if you're looking for a next new altcoin that you uh, might have never heard of or that a lot of people are hoarding, I know a lot of really, really big crypto guys that have one. And it's not getting a lot of media coverage, so it might be something to look into for yourself as well. Then crypto research firm Delphi Digital, Ethereum rival Phantom eyes break out yeah a lot of people are just excited for phantom because they're breaking out going pretty damn crazy right now the numbers on phantom are just looking really good this was an announcement we covered before as well because phantom is really doing their best guys i'm pretty excited for them uh can i say that they're the the biggest project out there right now no but apparently guy from coin bureau also made a video about them recently where he was pretty excited about it at least as far as i now know and uh i, I like phantom all right i like phantom <laughs> i like phantom then the Algorand thing, I want to say it's biased, but this altcoin will be the Google of crypto according to Skybridge Capital founder Anthony Scaramucci. All you got to know about this one is, guys, this person is for sure biased. Um, should we care? Absolutely not. Whatever he says, take it with five grains of salt, like take it with a basket of salt uh, because he's obviously going to talk his investment in. If you're saying, I've got a quarter billion dollars in Algorand right now, I think Algorand will be the Google. What can I do with that? Absolutely nothing. He is heavily invested in that sounds a little bit like a centralized type of idea where he's so heavily into it that he started promoting it like crazy. I mean, what can I do with this information? Nothing. A very wealthy individual is investing a lot in a specific crypto. I can't use that to my advantage. So understand that whenever I see some big guys investing, it is nice to see for adoption, it's nice to see for backing. But when they throw out these huge numbers and it's a coin that's not at the, t if they're saying $250 million to Bitcoin, I'm not betting an eye, right? But the lower the crypto is on the ranking, the more money that they put in, the more scared I get. Because it's like, hmm, are they going to try control the crypto in a certain way, shape, or form? Because they have authority. And again, you, you probably know his name already. And, well, they have a lot of money too. So what are they going to do with the project then? I'm never really so excited about that. Because some of these billionaires, they can hold on for longer periods of time. And some of them are really cashing out quite quickly when the tide turns. And I'm sometimes a little bit afraid for the bigger investors in that sense. But... Uh, that's a that's a different story about when you start to learn more about investing in a project before it goes live. You also start to wonder a lot about unlockings and whatnot, about uh, bigger whales and so. Very often you guys actually question me about what if there's a specific wallet that holds 90% of the tokens or so. Guys, that might actually be vested tokens. So for a lot of the, the coins that you know, a lot of the layer ones that you guys are talking about quite often recently, even layer twos, but it's about the idea. Um, it's, it's, it's easier for layer ones to see. What you will find... Is that a specific pro? No, let's do layer two. So one of the ones we talked about recently, I'm not going to name the coin right now, has a 96% tokens in one wallet. What you got to understand from that is that basically is the wallet that distributes to all the newer wallets. So it holds the tokens because they're not in circulation just quite yet, but they're vested. And that's the way these product protocols go about it. If you have a proof of work, things might work a little bit differently and so forth and so on. And there's another thing in that specific sense, which is if there's a couple of highly, highly centralized, uh, no, sorry, highly percentage wallets, basically, which in terms of token holdings, not perfectly English, but you guys understand what I'm saying. Very often it's exchanges, and you can just verify that if you really want to with the exchanges themselves, very often the name is also on there. But that's like the, the system nine out of 10 times. For example, like a Dogecoin, for example, it might have a couple of really big whales, but for a very good part, it's just the exchanges which have a lot of Dogecoin in that one address. And the same thing for XRP, for example. A lot of exchanges have huge amounts, right? Talking about Dogecoin, Elon Musk and Tesla reignite hopes of Dogecoin reaching a dollar in 2022 as rumors of a Starlink collaboration swell. 
Starlink is one of my favorite metaverse coins right now, so I was kind of wondering exactly what this was about. I've been trying to figure out exactly where this all came from or exactly how it works, uh, but uh, it's it's different than I would have expected, right? Because Starlink is a crypto, but in this sense here, in the last days of 2021, proponents began to visualize the potential for Dogecoin and Starlink, Elon Musk's internet company uh, corporation. And so, well, this is just a speculation. It's not really something we can hold on to. It's just somebody thinking of something and they made an article so uh don't hold on to this too much and last but not least has nothing to do with crypto google launches ripple giving tiny radar tech to a or a new lease of life google's open source radar api ripple is set to transform future devices and cars just thought it was kind of funny that they launched a company called ripple or a product called ripple yeah that, that is basically it all right guys that was it for today's video hopefully you all enjoyed it if you did make sure you press the like button and subscribe and I'll see you guys again in another one adios amigos